Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. As we have previously identified, Tier 7 is rather dreadful if you're playing on free-to-play, and you're not, well, having premium ships. You get into bot Tier 8 games quite a bit, and Tier 7 and 8 is chock-full of premium ships. So, what do you do? Today, we're looking at the Gneisenau, the free-to-play Tier 7 German battleship. Now, uh, I'll go quickly through just the setup, and then we'll get into a couple of games. And I will, as usual for the series, always be bottom tier. I won't be using anything that you can't get out of the game for free without paying any money. So no historical camos or anything. And uh, yeah, we'll be bottom tier. So how have I set up Magnizer now? I, I can't remember if this was the original setup I did in the review, but I've repurchased Magnizer now on my personal account because I have tried this on the press account and I just have too big of a target on the back of my uh, on, on my back. Let me just put it that way. So elite bonus, I've got the secondary gun specialization, which gives us improved reload time on both the auto secondaries and the manual secondaries. Because again, this is a German battleship. It's all about the secondaries. Actually, this is probably really more of a battle cruiser. <laughs> and setup wise, Again, a full secondary build here. I have the uh, secondary bot mod 2, which gives us better range on the secondaries and get, gives us better dispersion on the secondaries. You could also get 15% reload time just of the main secondaries of the 150s, but I, f I personally prefer this one because it actually gets us, um, well, no, uh, it, it actually gets, gets us, gets more things on target. And this is all about the secondaries. You can do as much damage with the secondaries on the ship than you can with the main guns. Again, battlecruiser setup, so I've got uh, propulsion in slot 2, and I've got steering in slot 3. And the commander I've got in here is uh, just a, you know, tier 6 commander, so he doesn't actually have the relatively important skills down the road. Uh, he doesn't have the close quarters combat expert quite yet, which is definitely something that you want. But in general, this is pretty much a survivability build so far, so I've got the survivalist here rather than getting an extra fire supremacy. I I have the generalist instead of getting exploit weakness or even the recon and surveillance. So uh, again, this is a survivability build more than how I would normally play this. And uh, gen adrenaline rush makes sense on the ship, but you are paying for it with the extinguisher. So you, you have, have a couple of choices here to make. Do you want your hydro to last longer on a German battleship? Um... It's not a destroyer hunter per se, so I am. I often use this in the past, in my past builds. I'm almost more tending towards the generalist, especially if you are in something like tier seven and you are facing a lot of stuff. And yes, obviously the close quarters combat expert for better dis for yet again better dispersion on the secondaries. All right, so camo wise, uh, no camo, <laughs> at least no 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 paid camo. Uh, I think I've played the battles with the uh, fifty percent, uh, with the five percent fire uh, fire reduction camo, which is currently not there. So uh, you can always use the seaborne assault, but then you have to pay silver. And if you you know you don't have that much, um, you can use one of the free ones that you get around, which doesn't give you any bonuses on the ship itself, but it does give you a bit more XP. All right. So what do we do in the Gneiser now, if we are, well, in a bottom tier battle? Let's get into a couple of games. In the very first game, we are playing on Haven in Domination, and we're up against a, an Enterprise. And again, it's a bottom tier game, plus a bunch of destroyers here. So in this first game, I am actually the only battleship on our team. <laughs> and with three enemy destroyers, things might get interesting. So I am going to head over into B Cup. And uh, the first thing I'm always setting is the torpedo spread to narrow, because at, uh, at about 5 kilometer range, I, I generally tend not to miss too much with the torpedoes. <laughs> so uh, I'm calling out, calling out B here for the team, and uh, I'm just going to make my way down there. Now, against destroyers, these are basically the Bismarck's guns. These are, the, this, these are technically the same 380s that you have on the Bismarck. If you're shooting at destroyers, at a long range, you can often get lucky, and so anything like about eight kilometers or longer on the Gneisenau, you can get quite lucky and actually get um, get full pens. So I'm staying on the armor piercing, and again, your main guns are not your primary weapons. Okay, there's the Gajamada. 
So I'm lining up my, for my forward turrets and just uh, getting some blind shots out, letting him know that I'm coming and um, maybe we get lucky. Okay, there's also the Mayhem. So we've got both uh, two enemy destroyers in 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 B Cup. And they, the Gaja is already in my secondary range. These 150 mil, auto, uh, 150 mil manual secondaries are your main weapon against destroyers. Now there are going to be torpedoes in the way, so I'm turning in. And again, at this, uh, this is a little bit close now. I get a bit unlucky here that um, I am going to take two, but uh, this is something I can sustain. And again, he's under concentrated fire from my secondaries. Slowing down a little bit because there's going to be more troops in the way. And the auto secondaries are blasting away as well. So now we've pushed in a battleship, we've pushed uh, two destroyers out and taken a fair chunk of damage off them. And the cruisers are staying behind and now we can um, now we can get into the capture zone. Now, he, here I'm making a bit of a mistake positioning wise. I should be turning in a lot more at this point. And I am turning in. But I'm and I'm sending some torpedoes out just in case someone is is um, someone is deciding to you know come around the corner. But um, I, I I am still I'm getting all my guns to bear and I am um, I'm not really positioning against the against torpedoes correctly that would come in because I should be going bow in. But um, at this point, it allows me to shoot at the Wichita, who decides to commit suicide by battleship. And these are the auto secondaries blasting away. He's dodged these torpedoes, and my secondary is taken out. And there's the Mayhem. And again, here, like these torpedoes, I should have seen them coming. So there's one torp, um, and I am still a little bit, a, a little bit too far, uh, to, giving a bit too much angle here. I should have been going completely nose in. So I'm going to take a torp or two here which is um, entirely avoidable, but has ramifications, as you will see, because now I'm flooding, so I have to use my damage con, which means now um, I don't have, I, I cannot get into a ranged duel with a Belfast, because the Belfast can set me on fire, and I've just used my damage con, so I have to rush the Belfast now, or disengage, um, or disengage around the island. And since we're dead even, I know that there was a destroyer around the corner, but at this point I'm deciding we're dead even. I don't, uh, that cruiser down south is gonna die and there's a destroyer chasing our carrier. So I'm gonna have to go for B cap and I'm gonna have to kill that Belfast. So I'm turning the ship around and decision made into B cap we go, keeping an eye out for any, any kind of destroyer torpedoes. Now again, secondaries, uh, secondaries being a good weapon against something like the Belfast, the, um, the, main, the main guns obviously do a decent amount of work. Now he smokes up and I, I, I want to get into C cup first because that cruiser there has left the carrier to his own devices which means we really really need the cup and I am being shot at obviously by the Belfast who, who is still in his smoke screen but now we've got the capture circle okay uh, he was out of my out of my hydro range I think and I don't have a hydro hydro anyway so you know what can we do? <laughs> Need to blind fire. Now I'm, now I'm on fire and I'm on low enough health that I do need to, need to use my damage con. And I, which means that I'm now on a timer because I need to kill that Belfast before he can set Parma fires. So I'm going to heal up a little bit. And um, he decides to go into a brawl with Igniser now, which is obviously not a healthy decision, especially at this range. I am just going to shred him to pieces. Uh, he, he will see my torpedoes coming, but I don't need the torpedoes. <laughs> I'm just going to kill him. So now, um, now obviously I'm I'm somewhat dead because the carrier is still alive, and I can probably there's a full health Amalfi. I might be able to deal with the Amalfi. I'm trying furiously to turn the ship around, but um, I am too too much out there at this point to, uh, to to be able to you know disengage safely. So the carrier is probably going to kill me at this point because that's an Enterprise and that's going to hurt. And there's no way I could dodge these torpedoes, so that was um, uh, that. Was that. And uh, there come the dive bombers, so I'm just going to try and get some shots off against the Amalfi, but I'm not very dead. So, um, we are two ships against four, but we're holding all the capture circles. Now the problem is that cruiser at Sea Cup, who decided not to defend the carrier uh, and leave the Shiratsuyu there to chase him, and uh, is dead. Uh, that that Mayhan. Uh, on our team needs to run and we might have a chance because we're holding all the four capture circle but again it's an enterprise uh, there's a there's just only so much he, he's going to be able to to run from now let's see if our carrier can still kill the Shiratsuyu but the Lexington is on so much and so low health 
yeah, Dexing kills the Japanese destroyer, but um, yeah, Mayhan, I think Mayhan decides to commit suicide by uh, by Italian cruiser, and I think the the carrier is either going to kill the Mayhan or going to kill our Lexington, because um, he yeah he's been fighting a very very excellent battle. So you see how this has spiraled out of control, right? My poor my poor positioning in B cap uh, has has gotten me a, has gotten me flooded, which forced me a damage con, which then in turn forced me to um, to deal with Belfast, plus the the fact that. Um, that our our cruiser decided to let the destroyer through up north hasn't helped either. So yeah, our carrier is dead and um, the Mayhan is dead as well. So that was that. But um, you know, uh, well well played to the enemy team, and uh, we've we've still done we've still done good in a bottom tier battle cruiser thing. We've just still done fifty six thousand damage. We've come up top come out at top of the team. And um, seriously, if you look at the damage numbers from the rest of the team, there was only so much we could do. But you see, we've done almost as much damage with the secondaries as with the main guns. So, uh, let's go and look at another one. In the second battle, again, it's a bottom tier battle. And we have um, a Roma and a Kutuzov on our side. And uh, there is an Alabama and a Kutuzov on the enemy team. Now, Alabama is a very dangerous ship. She is, oh yeah, and the Zim, uh, Sims, and actually four destroyers. Four destroyers, two battleships, and a cruiser. Uh, Alabama is a very dangerous ship at long range. If I can, if I can catch him in a, in a close range fight, I should have the upper hand, even though he's a premium and I'm a tier lower. So, uh, four destroyers on the enemy, enemy team. Um, team calls out C. I'm kind of thinking to go towards A cup, but um, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're calling out B cup, so I'm gonna turn around. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I heard you. This is like nice now. It doesn't turn that quickly, okay? Give me a second. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I prefer the flanks. I don't quite like B cap, but at least on this map, there's an island in the center, which gives some protection. But uh, yeah, four destroyers, this could get interesting. So, um, what do you do in Ignizer now if you're, if you're bottom tier and you're faced with premiums and four enemy destroyers? Well, um, don't stop. That's probably the first thing. Okay, there's a Jervis. At this range, armor piercing is a, is a decent choice. Okay, there's the Alabama. Uh, but there's a Leberecht Mars. So, uh, shots out at the Leberecht Mars. But I think, is he going to turn? Yeah, just the last second he turns. So these are going to miss. But uh, that's fine. Again, my um, my main guns are... The Gneiser now has a hilariously bad uh, trollish dispersion. But now he's in range of my secondaries. And that's where it gets interesting. So, there are some torpedoes coming. Which means I'm going to have to slow down because Leberich Mars is going to... No, these are overpenetrating because mostly because I have, uh, I'm too close. But Leberich Mars has got torpedoes away. So, slow up again. Uh, let's start, uh, speed up again. Slow up, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just don't stop. Right, just don't stop, just keep going. I'm going to take one here from the mass. Yep, that's fine. There's Tashkent coming. Uh, there's Jervis and there's Alabama. Okay, what did I say earlier about Alabama being very, very dangerous long from long range? Okay, full health, almost full health Alabama versus versus Kneisenau. Go, go. Alright, double Citadel. Is he going to slow down? Yeah, looks like he's slowing down. Okay, Torps out and um, the secondaries into the, into the bow section for full pens. There we go. Uh, just until the mains are reloaded. Okay, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, that hurt. But uh, I'm hurting right back. So, uh, main guns, uh, main guns against the deck in the center. There come some torpedoes. Uh, these are not sims, so these are probably Tashkent torps. And uh, again, secondaries into the stern. Auto secondaries firing. There's Tashkent. He's just out of torps. Sims is behind me. Just don't stop. <laughs> just don't stop. No damage conning single fire. Okay, Alabama is dead. Um, Jervis just got clapped in, in the face. Uh, Tashkent doesn't have range and Sims is does half, but he's behind me. So um, if he wants to torp me, I can probably dodge most of them. Auto secondary is opening up and I'm just going to give enough space for the second for the uh, secondaries, but uh, Z takes him out with torps. And uh, it looks like they have an AFK Kutches off. But at this point, we've got... Uh, we've, whoa, they all died. <laughs> that was quick. Um, yeah, AFK is coaches off, so uh, now we'll just be doing a bit of farming. But yeah, um, situations like this, uh, anticipate where the torpedoes are going to be, where they're coming from, and um, don't slow down, because you are fast enough 
um, that, oh, Leibricht Mass, okay, uh, uh, get that one, secondaries out, again, the secondaries are your main weapons here against these sort of these things, uh, because they do a lot of damage, these 150 mil uh, AP, and again, too close for, but I've got, I had the armor piercing loaded, and he's dead, now, I don't know if, got, if he's got torps away, so, uh, while we're farming the rest of the Kutus off, I'm gonna just put the Hydra up, just to, to see if, if there's anything happening, but yeah, um, Keep, be aware of your surroundings and pick your battles, right? The Gneisen now is not a ship where you sit at long range uh, and and shoot at the enemy team. I mean, she can do that because from the front, the Gneisen now is basically a Bismarck. <laughs> but <laughs> without, not, not as tanky, but um, she shines as a break sh breakthrough ship, but you have to pick your battles because you don't have the health that you have in, say, a Bism Bismarck to, to spare. You have to, to choose your path and stick to it, and then go through guns blazing. But uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> we did 70,000 points of damage, and that was a ruffle stump medal. So um, yes, the Gneiser now can do this, but you have to choose your, your you have to choose the opportune moment. So sometimes you spend half the battle just sitting at range and shooting at at at, at, at shoot at bow in and shooting at battleships. But sometimes you get um, you get a window of opportunity where you can break through and uh, things happen. Which brings us to our third battle, and of course we're bottom tier, as usual, we're up against uh, a Lenin and a Kutuzov, in, and another Sims in in the enemy team in terms of premium ships. Uh, it's a carrier battle as well, so we do need to um, watch out a little bit, but we've got a good Shokaku player on our side, so let's see how this turns out. Now, again, domination. I love domination, uh, be just because you can, you, you can choose your... You're not forced into a place like epicenter, but you can choose your flanks and your routes. Okay, so Cossack, where are you going, Cossack? Uh, I'm gonna stick with you. Uh, three destroyers again on the enemy team, but uh, okay, they're calling out B. I, I don't like B. Um, Cossack goes C, and that cruiser there as well. So I'm just gonna follow Cossack. No, no, I'm, I don't like B because in B, it's v you, you have you're open very open to to the to sh uh, flanking shots from both sides whereas if i'm going around c cup i only have to worry about one side okay aka uh long range 10 uh, 10 kilometers shots out let's we'll see if we hit something but at this range i can probably do some full pens uh yeah that was one full pen and we shot his rudder off so he's gonna have used his damage con and uh, see in secondary range almost oh, i get some shots out just in case he sails into them yeah not quite but uh, yeah, now he's in secondary, so a couple more shots. And I'll just see if I hit anything, they're all blind. Uh, not really. Okay. Uh, long range, thanks. Long range fire here. But we've ma we've now made our way into C Cup, and it looks like C Cup is uncontested. If C Cup was being contested by one or more of the destroyers, I have a cruiser here with me, and again, I'm somewhat, um, I'm somewhat uh, confident to take them on. Now, uh, I'll stop long-range firing at Akka, but we have done some, some damage, and he's getting under, coming under air attack, and remember, his damage con's on cooldown. Now, I'm getting under air attack, so I'm turning in and see if they can get the carrier. Yeah, uh, carrier dropped the, dro the rocks, and it looks like the Cossack is, uh, is rushing, which is good, I think, because they're, two, they're the enemy two battleships, and there's the enemy carrier. Now, of course, he's going to need some help with that, but... Um, Carrier has been focusing me rather than Cossack, so uh, there's Gasconia and Lenin. Lenin is on lower health, so we're going to start firing at, at Lenin first. And um, yeah, there's still a destroyer in B Cup, but there's a cruiser next to me, so I should be good to just uh, full, st full steam ahead and go on a rampage. Let's see if we can draw. Now, I want to draw the fire from the Lenin and the Gasconia over there. Okay, Lenin is, is flooding. Okay, Wichita is firing armor piercing at Benson. Okay, I'm gonna help out because he might be topping you otherwise, and I need you to deal with the Akka. Okay, Benson dead. Um, Gasconia obviously seen me, or was it Lennon shooting at me? Haven't 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 really paid attention at this point. Uh, but I think they're both shooting at me. So, but I've also got Cossack coming in, so I am taking obviously damage. I mean, I'm a bottom tier battleship, but uh, yeah, no stopping. <laughs> I'm gonna rush these two guys and see how much fire I can draw and get into torpedo range. Okay, Gasconia has seen has seen Cossack, so I'm only under fire by Lenin. Uh, but Gasconia gives me a nice broadside, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep shooting at him. And yeah, French battleship. Okay, he's going backwards probably to to dodge Cossack torps, and I'm in torpedo range. My my auto secondaries are opening up. 
So right side drops out at Gasconia and we're gonna keep firing at Gasconia because Lenin is uh, coming dir directly to fort towards us. So I can use my left side torps against Lenin and um, don't even have to worry about him. Okay, these shots are mostly bouncing off. And uh, now we're doing a nice drive-by and just kill the Lenin. While, meanwhile, the other torpedoes are impacting on the Gasconia. And, um, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, everything's on reload. <laughs> but Gasconia's almost dead. And now we're just gonna use the secondaries on the right side, get him turned around and just uh, get him the 150s into the bow section. Cossack's helping as well, and the carrier is running, which means he's not focusing on anything. Okay, Cossack takes him out, well done. Oh, that was another Terry. <laughs> and now uh, we're just chasing down the Lexington. We've lost the ship, so no Ruffle Stomp Metal for us this time. But um, yeah, that, that worked nicely. <laughs> so obviously, if these two had been completely focused on me, this would have been a problem. Because if I was under fire by the carrier, uh, or under air attack by the carrier, and by these two battleships, then um, I couldn't have done this. They, could, they would have just destroyed me. But because I had a widget on my left, who was taking care of destroyers around the cup, and I had the Cossack as well with us, um, I actually had the, well, you know, I, I actually had the freedom to to rush. And if I can get in secondary range, look at that dispersion. <laughs> if I can get in secondary range, then um, the Gneisenau is a very, very dangerous ship. So, uh, but you do need to pick your battles because again, if Lenin and Gasconia had fo had focused on me and the carrier, I, I would have been dead before I even got in secondary range. So uh, you, you do need to pick your fights and spot the opportunities. But if you can do that in the Gneisenau, you can do, even if you're bottom tier, even if you're up against premium ships, uh, you can do a very, very decent amount of damage in the ship and um, you can, even in bottom tier games, you can consistently come up on top of the team. Uh, there will be battles where this isn't going to work, right? Uh, while we're chasing down that remining destroyer. Um, there, will be, be, there will be battles where this doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me there. Push, pushing you out of the way here. Uh, there will be battles where this doesn't work. Epicenter is, is one of those examples where oftentimes... You're trying to rush a flank, but um, your team just decides it doesn't want to be in the cap circle and you're alone. What are you going to do? So Gneisenau, like the other German battleships as well, coming going forward, you need to you need to pick your you need to pick your your battles and your your opportune moment when you're going to start going forward. But if you if you have a chance, if you see a chance, like there are enemy ships that are otherwise occupied, and you can get in there uh, and drop torpedoes and get your secondaries operating, she can do a very very good amount of damage. And as you've seen in the brawl with the Alabama, you know if you're not paying attention at close range, um, Agnizer now can kill you. So yeah, all in all, um, I, I think this is very much doable. The Gneisenau is not an easy ship to play, especially coming from the Bayern, and if you get into yourself into Tier 8 battles. Uh, keep in mind that you need to have... Play her more like, a, like you would an extremely heavy cruiser. You need, to ha you need to have your opportunity. You need to have your positions. And, um, you know, you, you need to not be focused when, you start, when you're making your move. So uh, rushing into ships that are focusing you is, is suicide. But rushing, as, rushing in a situation where uh, they are distracted and there are other ships that are pushing with you, you can be very much a, a spearhead uh, on a, of a push, even if you're in a, in a bottom tier game. And I mean, look at this, right? Again, uh, I mean, we haven't done most of the damage, but um, we've, we've got three kills and I think we've, we've done good. So that's the Gneiser now in a bottom tier against premium ships. Is it going to work every single time? No, it's not. But you can still have a lot of fun and come out of the top of the game with a ship that you have to pay absolutely no money whatsoever to get. <laughs> and, you know, if you're done with the Gneisenau grind, there comes the Bismarck next. So, all good things. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.